Hi there, and welcome to a new Plugin Guru Quickie video. My name is John Lemcool. Um, this is Quickie video number 17, and we're going to be taking a look at toxifying factory patches from FM8. Not going to start from scratch. That's something that's only for the, the video tutorial that comes with Toxic FM8. Um, I show you from the very beginning how to get things set up so that you uh, have a solid foundation. We're going to do stuff like this and more actually to this patch before we're done. Um, this video, like all of these videos that I'm producing, are created, uh, sponsored by my website, PluginGuru.com, and I have patches for a ton of plugins, um, mostly native instrument stuff, although it's about to change. In fact, before we do this, let me show you real quick what I'm working on. Salenth! Yay! Uh, June 14th, a new library is going to be coming out for Salenth from myself, and um, Salenth is a really really impressive synthesizer. If you don't own it, you should download the demo and start playing with it because it's quite impressive. Um, linerdigital.com, right there. And you can go to the download page and right there, download the demo. It's, as I think in the US right now, it's under $170. And it goes and compliments uh, what you hear from Native Instrument stuff really well. So the sounds I'm making are, I'm going aggressive because that kind of library does not exist for Salenth yet. Um, so let me show you a couple of patches that I'm working on. Here's. Here's a bald cat, which is fun on the mod wheel. <laughs> a ducky soup. Is really cool. Listen to the filter. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Uh, just plain wrong. Uh, this is cool. Samurai sword. Suzy Q single. Unison. Like I said, you can really mess things up. Um, oh, these are really cool. Uh, the twins. Here's uh, the body. And I was talking about the LFOs. Check this out. This has an envelope assigned to the rate of the LFO. And then it, so it goes crazy and then it hits a tempo and stays. You combine that with the previous patch and you get. And you put that in the groove. Let's see if I get this work. Here's a wobble bass. And the uh, LFO speed is crazy. Uh, real shortly, let me show you one more thing. This is a pad that I made. This really shows off the LFO's lightning thief. So I'm just going to play a big chord. Listen to what it does. It's very cool. The new library will be coming out in June. Make sure that you've subscribed to my mailing list at my website. And uh, at the very top, you just click a little tab and uh, keep informed with what's going on. All right. So what we're going to do for this video is uh, we're going to take a factory patch from FM8. If you go to the library to the instruments, we're going to play with Baby's Got Beef. Remember, I went through the librarian played went, that's the factory sounds, you know? There's, there are some good programs in here, some really good programs. 
Um, <laughs> it's just music's changed a lot. So save me when I take this sound into the 2012 era. What could we do to it to quickly make it <laughs> workable <laughs> in dubstep? Because you, I mean, yeah, make a face. <laughs> it don't work, man. It just. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having fun. Um, so so uh, let's go over here to the operator page. The concept that I um, kind of devised for the Toxic Library is basically a, a, the concept of making really bright, huge amounts of harmonics and then forcing a whole bunch of them onto the mod wheel so that they aren't there until you need them. And then you can bring them in and do cool things with them. So let's take this patch. First thing we gotta do is look at the light, the uh, envelope. And you can go to the envelope page and see everything that's going on here. It's, in many cases, it's much easier to use the easy morph and. And if you notice, C has got this nice little. I, I could kill it totally by using the, the timbre uh, to offset and change that. But I don't want to do it that way. I'm going to set it back to zero. And let's hit apply. And that resets everything and puts these envelope values actually into the envelope page. And here I'm going to click right here on the little segment in between and change the curve. So it still has a little bit of a wah. That's kind of a... You want that. Um, next up, let's, let's start adding crazy harmonics to this. Um, if you look at this, the configuration is that C is feeding into F and coming out. And I don't know why, but pan is set to one to the right. And being a picky programming fart, <laughs> um, let's turn those off. Okay, and then right here, D and E are going down and out. What if we were to combine these guys? Let's let's get them to be a more complex algorithm. That's that's the big catch word here. These values are pretty small. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit because instead I don't want it to have so much harmonics here because I'm gonna start feeding it. See if I have this high. Okay, I like that. The key when you're doing this kind of stuff is to turn up and down volumes and listen to that change. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna send the control of that volume, the up and down of the volume to the mod wheel. So if this sounds good, right? If I go to C, I go here to mod, I crank that all the way up to 100. It's now the same as when I was bringing the volume up and down on the matrix, but now it's on the mod wheel. So from here on out, I need to have the mod wheel all the way up while I'm building this, because if I don't, I'm not gonna hear all the harmonic content that's going into this uh, synth engine. And now let's take this guy here and let's shoot him over to D. So now before this, C and F have been their own little couple in the corner, and D and E have been their own little couple in the other corner. And uh, we're gonna get them in the middle of the floor together. And then turn up this. I think I like that. So, one thing we need to do. Baby's Got Beef has kind of a weird thing going on with a very slow LFO assigned to pitch. So double click right there. And that doesn't do that anymore. And let's double click here to turn off the negative LFO that's going into E and messing up the sound a little bit. I want it to be more stable until I, I'm going to be in control of when the sound changes with the mod wheel. I don't want other things going crazy that I don't have control over right now. All right, 
so let's go to D, go to the mod parameter, and this parameter is also available on the mod page right here. See how it goes over to D? I'm just, if you want to do it as a shortcut, it's uh, on the operator pages, they've got this modulation list thing right here you can check out. <laughs> getting there but let's have this complexing that's going out from C now let's feed that into D let's crank up our outputs because they're very soft Not bad. Now we want to get it more complex even still. Put our mod wheel all the way up by changing the waveform. So let's go to F. Sometimes this is fast to just type. It goes six. Set that to one. Oh, there we hear it. That's not bad, not bad. Now some of this distortion stuff you're hearing, it's actually from the effects. If you're going to turn these off, it's a sine wave. Well, it's not a sine wave because we've got it set to a complex waveform. Let's make it a sine wave. Let's have E, volume goes, that's And I need more sub. I need another oscillator. So let's go to B and control, click, and turn up his output. And go to B and look at the envelope. Why are you doing that? Let's go to sustain. For some reason, sustain and release were turned off on this. And, and let's take him down to 0.5. So he's at the 16 foot level. If you wanted to make it a sub, go down to 0.25. Then maybe a little up, so it's got some detune. Okay, now we're going to have fun with LFOs and with the arpeggiator. And that will conclude this lesson. We're going to take us, um, LFO 2 and have it do a pulse to the volume first of all of just check this out let's have it just do it to these guys that are already assigned to the mod wheel um, now there's some things you have to do to the LFOs in uh, FM8 they, they set for some reason this key scale and velocity scale so that across the keyboard and by velocity the LFO rates change and you can't do that when you're doing what we're doing. So set those at zero. Come over here and turn on sync. Turn on key sync so that it starts at the same location each time you play a note. And let's invert the pulse. Oh no, we don't want to invert we don't like that. Now you hear a little bit because if we don't want to hear it at all, we could turn that all the way off so that it's... That's C, and he's going into F. 
effects turn on overdrive i like overdrive it does a very nice and this end it might kill too much it's all about listening and going hmm does that work that might not work that might not that this sound i don't like that but i did like the tube amp you still hear some of the the the, the, the drive of it so i like that better so we'll use that and let's Let's turn on a little delay and set it to sync. And we're at 140, so let's say that's, I think, about 70. the two bands. The settling tone, I don't like that. So let's see, where is it coming from? Oh, I know what it is. Okay, so let's take this from here back to 0.5. There's too much delay, so let's turn on the delay so it's not 50-50. That's one possible way to approach this. If you wanted to take it further, we could come over to the uh, mod page. And let's crank up the LFO on the straight tones as well. But maybe not on um, on B. B is my static, sala solid body. I don't have it. Well, you could. Here's the difference. Here's without. Here's with. You lose that bottom. So double click that off. In fact, you could actually go to A. This is one sound. As I listen to this, make sure that you go here and turn. I don't know why the, the patches are calling that off, but we had this one fade out over time. Um, click and zoom to zoom out.
I noticed the sound changed when the volume went down, so I turned off this. I'm gonna stay up, and then I'll just turn it down here. Now to make this bigger, I would probably Finally, the final steps would be to go to master. Bring up a little analog set, a little detuning. The digital might be nice. This is a an aliasy type of effect. And then finally, give us some high panning and then maybe that's like maybe seven notes polyphony. Arpeggiator, we're gonna look at that for a minute. Um, if you turn on the ARP right here, or right here on the ARP page. Yeah, that matches our dubstep fiber. <laughs> we can fix that. Um, go here to timing, where it's from 16th notes, set to eighth notes. And what's cool with this is you can have each step be octaves. pitch which is right here and then they have a note length and if you do note length then maybe you go over here to here and break that release body so we go here so we're turning it cool right it's it's a metamorphosis man it's about listening and going oh I kind of like where that's going and trying to have a strong concept in your mind of what you want when you're done I, I want something that's got an interesting thing to go with this rhythm going I mean it that's kind of how it works with this stuff um, but it's experimenting and just learning that when you change this this is what it's going to do the, the whole key to synthesis programming is knowing what the parameters do and once you know what the parameters do it's like building a house you know when you need to use your circular saw versus some sort of a hand saw versus you know a hammer they all have different abilities and so forth in your programming and if and if if you don't have them figured out, then um, then it's then you're just kind of like, you know, you're in the dark, just pulling on things. So spend time learning what things do sound-wise, and hopefully this helps give you some ideas on ways to go. Um, 
After this, we're going to get into Slynth, and we'll do some really basic synthesizer programming tutorials. So I hope this helped, uh, and we'll see you again. All right? See ya. Thanks. Oh, as always, thank you again for being great customers. I appreciate all of you.